Hi, this is Tom from Life 4.0. Let's talk dinghies. Let's face it, either you own one now or you will soon as you prepare to get out on your boat and see the world. If you are at an anchorage, take a look around. Nearly everyone has a dinghy. You'll get an earful from other boaters on what kind of dinghy an outboard engine to buy. Small, big, maybe just a classic rowboat. But we'll leave that to others to hash out. This video covers a topic that not enough people talk about. What are the options for stowing a dinghy? And how should you set up your boat to keep the dinghy from going overboard in heavy seas? And what to do with that heavy outboard engine? Wonder no longer. We'll share lessons learned from our many years of fine-tuning the dinghy management process. Okay, so let's get into it. There's really three main ways you can store your dinghy when you aren't using it. The simplest is to just tow it off the stern. If you are moving between anchorages or going for a short sail on calm waters, you can't beat it for convenience. At your destination, you simply hop in the dinghy and start exploring. But if the waves build up or a storm approaches, you can be putting your dinghy at great risk. In a following sea, the dinghy will want to surf down waves, causing it to careen from side to side and jerk strongly on the tow line. You can also run the risk of a wave swamping the dinghy. We would typically pull the drain plug before towing the dinghy for this reason. You can also rig up a bridle so the dinghy is being pulled from the center line and gets some protection behind the stern. But as you can see here, the dinghy still acts like a restless stallion. If you do choose to tow your dinghy, it is best to remove the outboard, both for less drag and to increase buoyancy. The second option is to store the dinghy on the foredeck. This is the classic approach harkening back to the days of old wooden ships, with their hard dinghies secured to the deck. All romance aside, it is a perfectly viable option, one that we have done on several occasions. However, with the girth of today's modern inflatables, it makes for tight quarters up on the foredeck if you need to handle dock lines, reach the anchor, or get into that forward sail locker. In hot climates, it also blocks the use of foredeck hatches and the cooling effects of a tropical breeze down below. A wide dinghy on the foredeck blocks the skipper's vision looking forward in the critical area immediately in front of the bow. But if you anticipate storm conditions or heavy seas, or you are going offshore, one could argue it is the most secure location. Here, we are storing the dinghy for a short period. If we were going offshore with the dinghy on the foredeck, we would flip it upside down. This keeps the water out and also allows the dinghy to be lashed down more securely. Finally, there is the option of dinghy davits. In our experience, this is the most versatile solution. It is a quick task to raise the dinghy on the davits. It frees up the deck for cleaner access, and done properly, it provides a safe, damage-free location. We'll focus in the remainder of this video on the lessons we learned with dinghy davits, and stay tuned near the end as I describe how we safely manage the stowage of that heavy, bulky beast, the outboard engine. So let's take a look on board Sea Rose. We've got a dinghy davits that we've added on to this boat. And these ones are made by a Toronto company called Atkins and Howell. So they mount to the transom there. This part, the, that lower part's adjustable. This uh, part is adjustable. And that arm, you can get longer or shorter uh, arms there. And we've tilted it up just to get to the kind of the right position for the dinghy. Our dinghy isn't that wide. If it was wider, we'd want to tilt the arms out more flat to get it to sort of project out further. So we've got a six to one ratio uh, to hoist the dinghy up on these control lines. And we've got lines here to stabilize the dinghy sideways. So if we're heeled over, it's trying to keep the dinghy from sort of rocking back and forth. 
These are aluminum, nice lightweight, and also our dinghy is an aluminum rigid hold dinghy. So it is quite lightweight. Well, there's two challenges with the davits. Um, these, there's a lot of load on where the davit mounts down there. There's a backing plate as well, um, but we had a, a company reinforce the transom down there to be able to take the load of the davit. The davit, like I said, has a lot of weight on it, a lot of pressure on it, um, especially when you're in heavy seas and the dinghy is trying to shift around a lot. So the transom area down there was thickened um, to make it stronger, more rigid. Um, the second challenge, and I'll back up a little bit so you can see it better, is just the width here. That's We really love how wide the swim platform is when you're getting on and off the boat from the dinghy, or you're swimming off the boat, um, or just want to dangle your toes in the water. Uh, it's really nice to have such a wide swim platform. The downside of that is when you have a davits for a dinghy, the davits have to be very, very wide. We didn't want uh, a super long dinghy. We were very concerned about weight. Uh, we wanted to have something that we could pull up on the beach without, you know, needing four strong men. <laughs> so we have a, it's about an eight and a half foot dinghy, I think it is. You can see it's not quite the width of the davits. The hoist line is brought in a little bit here and brought in a little bit there. Uh, the ideal position for the davits would have been closer together, but again, because of the swim platform width, we had to go for the wider one. Um, so it would really be set up for a larger dinghy, but we're not going to go that route. Next, let's discuss the height of the dinghy on the davits. You don't want it too low and run the risk of it getting swamped by a wave from the stern. But I do see a lot of dinghies that are mounted quite high. This can be the case if the dinghy is integrated into a stern arch, perhaps one that also holds solar panels. I wouldn't recommend these arrangements for two reasons. First, the center of gravity is so high it puts extra strain on the davit arms, the arch, and other parts of the support structure. But also, it obstructs the skipper's view astern. Our davits are positioned at about chest height. As you can see here, it gives Cairn an unobstructed view while navigating. She can look from side to side and behind her with a clear view to other boats and hazards. It also gives enough room above the dinghy to handle dock lines. But it is not too low to prevent the use of the swim platform while the dinghy is still on the davits. We find it to be the ideal height. Next, I wanted to share a couple of lessons learned on the actual hoisting of the dinghy up on the davits. With the stock davits, we immediately ran into an issue with the actual hoisting setup. We made some additional modifications to the pulley. The pulley system integrated, uh, I didn't like very well. Um, it, the line chafes when you have the arm up this high. The line coming out on the inside of the pulley chafes against the bracket there. So I ended up trying different things. I mentioned just gave up and just bought my own uh, nice uh, ball bearing blocks low resistance and just hung it off with the bolt in between there and that works phenomenally better on both sides. Uh, before it was really difficult to raise and lower the, the dinghy, the line would get caught when you're lowering it and uh, it was a big pain. With a better set of low resistance blocks in place, the next consideration was where on the dinghy to attach the two hoist lines. Up on the bow, I took a short line and shackled it to the towing eye of the dinghy. On the other end, I attached a heavy brass ring, just long enough so that the pulley would rotate freely away from the hull. To the ring, I clipped a stout carabiner from the hoist line. On the stern, I made up a small bridle that connects the two hoisting eyes on the hull of the dinghy to the center ring, and attach a carabiner to that ring. I positioned the ring just slightly outboard of the dinghy's center line, so that as the dinghy comes out of the water, it tilts slightly towards the bow, and therefore matches the slight angle of the davit arm, making the dinghy more stable and secure. In an ideal setup, the forward hoisting line would use a built-in hoisting eye located just in front of the fuel tank. But as I mentioned previously, due to the width of the swim platform, and therefore the wide spacing of the davits, I had to move the hoist position to in front of the bow 
to match the width of the davits. With the swim platform up and locked, we are now ready to hoist the dinghy. With the lightweight nature of an aluminum dinghy, two people can easily lift it by hand. And with the help of cleats, one person can pull it up without much additional effort. Once a dinghy is up as high as it can go, don't just cast off the dock lines and head out to sea. There are a few important steps in order to finish securing the dinghy. Of paramount importance is to make sure you do everything you can to keep the dinghy from moving. Even the slightest shifting of the dinghy can lead to chafe and all of the unpleasantries that come with it. Each dinghy davit combination will have its own ideal lashing setup. We start with a horizontal line that goes out to the toe eye and back to the davit. This keeps the bow from swinging fore and aft. Similarly, we tie another horizontal line on the stern from the hull of the dinghy back to the railing. This holds the inner inflatable tube up in close and secure to the elbow of the davit arm. In this area of the davit, we added a layer of padding to reduce chafe on the inflatable tube. This is a high pressure point for our setup, and the padding is critical to preserving the dinghy. Next, we need to consider how to keep the dinghy from swaying port and starboard when we are heeled over. You want to think this through thoroughly. We see a lot of dinghies that are moving all around when their mothership is heeling or in heavy seas. If you consider that shifting cargo on a big freighter is a critical risk to its stability as it rolls in big seas, you want to apply the same thinking to your dinghy stability. We take two long lines and tie them athwartships, one from the bow across the dinghy to Sea Rose's handrail on the opposite side, and similarly from the dinghy's stern to the other side of the cockpit. If you give these lines a strong tug before tying them, you'll end up with a very stable dinghy. You don't want to be caught out in big seas trying to attach these lines wow. while the boat is rolling. The time to do the work is at the dock. Okay, I promised I would share our thoughts on stowing the outboard engine, so let's spend a few minutes on that topic before we finish. The first thing I want to say is, don't be the captain that tows their dinghy with the outboard still attached unless you are and will be until your destination in dead, flat, calm water. In any other situation, you risk swamping the dinghy, putting you and possibly others at risk to recover it. It also adds a lot of drag and strain on your towing line. You have undoubtedly seen our outboard in earlier clips, stowed up on the stern rail. Here it is in windy conditions, safely secured behind Karen. Let's go on board and discuss a few important details. And behind Karen is our outboard crane. So we added that on. This is a crane made by Gar Hauler. Um, it's a really rugged crane. We like it. We had it on our old boat. And it's got like a six to one ratio or something like that to lift up the outboard. Uh, Jeannot provided this outboard bracket for us. Well, we bought it as an option, but it came from Jeannot. Um, and our outboard is 15 horsepower, two stroke, it's pretty heavy, it weighs about 80 pounds. So it's um, something that's really hard to sort of manhandle and get up there on your own. You really need a crane to properly do it. So, um, and you need the right height of the crane. We had a previous crane uh, that just didn't get enough height uh, pulling up the strap and you couldn't get it up and over this bracket. You can adjust that uh, bar up there to go more vertical, but this was fine for us. So it swings out. We bring the dinghy alongside and lift the outboard up and bring it over here. It's very, very convenient. Um, I made some adjustments here to kind of bring the crane vertical. Um, when it was secured right against the rail here, uh, the crane was kind of leaning out over the, um, the boat and the outboard would want to stay out there rather than swing in here. So that was a little bit of an adjustment there. And then this is the base of the crane. So I made a, a angled piece so that this tube would come down and hit that bottom plate flat. Inside there is a little ball um, and then the tube goes down over top of that ball. I did have to add, I chose to add this strut here um, just to give this part of the railing 
uh, more rigidity, especially when we're in uh, pitching waves and the boat's kind of going bow and stern a lot. Um, this the rail would would flex a little bit, and I was just concerned about the um, the wear and tear in it. So I added that strut there to give some more rigidity to the stern rail in that area. Okay, we'll wrap up with a demonstration of Karen and I using the crane to hoist the outboard engine. The first step is we bring the dinghy alongside and tie it off in position with the stern of the dinghy aligned with the stern of Sea Rose. Next, I pass down to Karen a safety line. It is a bit hard to see here, but this line is tied from the stern rail to the outboard's handle as a precaution in case the outboard were to drop in the water. This line saved us once when the lifting strap on the outboard broke loose. I pass down the hoist line to Karen and she attaches it to the lifting strap on the engine. Okay. As she loosens the outboard clamps, I begin the hoist. It helps to have both people stabilizing the outboard, as even a small wave can make it swing out of control. I rotate it over the mount and lower it into position, securing the outboard clamps. After stowing the hoisting lines, I wrap one line around the bottom of the outboard and pull it tight to one side. This line keeps the outboard from pivoting during heavy seas. While I am finishing up, Karen is getting the hoist lines attached to the dinghy so we can raise it and be on our way. There you go. That is how we manage the stowage of our dinghy and outboard engine on Sea Rose. I hope this was helpful to you. We always appreciate your suggestions and comments. Please consider giving us a thumbs up as it helps others find this kind of content. And if you are not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing to Life 4.0. Fair winds! Be sure to check out our playlist of other how-to videos on our Life 4.0 channel as well as our many sailing adventure videos as we explore this amazing planet one anchorage at a time.